All right, I'm a man of my word. We are back to the map project. I guess the map series, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's going to be similar to how I did it all the, like, about ten months ago. Um, but it's going to be a little bit different. I like to think a little bit more professional, as loosely you can use that term again on me. Um, and let's just get started. Um, I'm going to only be doing uh, the default maps at first, then we'll be moving on to some custom ones. Uh, you can leave me suggestions in the comments, but I won't be getting to them right away. Just, but don't get discouraged if you don't see it right away. I'm just, you know, I, I want to do the default ones first this time. Started up, uh, we're going to be going first off with the ones that initially launched the game at, like, you know, release date. So, like, ones like Crossfire, Rapid Core, I won't be doing those right away. We'll just be doing the default set, uh, alphabetical order. So, you know, surprise, surprise, first one will be Boot Camp. Let's go. Alright, so Boot Camp here is probably one of the most played, at least from what I remember back in the day, twenty about 2010. Pretty big map. Um, the thing about this map is that it was initially designed first for the single player mode. I can't remember exactly where it fit into the earlier Half-Life uh, storyline. But it was obviously supposed to be uh, like an army area where like, you know, the Marines would like hang out. It then was repurposed into a map for use in a cut game mode. Which I think... I also forget the name of because I'm an idiot. But it basically would have been... Loot! It would have been called loot or something like that, where people, you'd be split into small teams, and you would have to bring back, like, the, what, the loot crate, if you will, to your own team base to get points. And it'd be a round system, not unlike Counter-Strike, where once you died, you were out for that round and would have to wait to next round to respawn. Uh, but once that round, they ran out of time for the, much of their multiplayer content, it switched to just a deathmatch map. It was designed by our friend Dario Caselli, where I don't know where his um, signature is. Any map that he worked on in this game, he left a signature of his uh, somewhere out of bounds. I can't tell you where it is, though, here, so, because I'm an idiot. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so let's just break this down. We have your base. This is your main kind of hub right here. You lead off into several different buildings. Just get be a quite complicated map first time around. Um, this is the smallest, uh, map, uh, little building, actually. It doesn't really have much to connect to it. You got your good... Important, though, because you got not only health and an SMG, but your... Your glue on here, so that's important. It's always a very, very desirable thing. And you got a nice little area where you can throw some stuff over, like your satchel charges, but be careful. Because, you know, people can throw grenades in here in turn. And you can also jump to here. The, take note, a lot of the buildings in this map have these little ledges you can walk along to, like, help you get to places faster, stuff like that. We'll go back in this building, which I won't show off too much. If you start up there, which is where I spawned, you get a crossbow, and that's obviously good for sniping. You got some nice goodies down here on the bottom floor. A lot of these rooms are pretty open um, to accommodate for, like, you know, kind of, like, you know, more skirmish-type matches and stuff. If you got up here, obviously, you got the gauze. And if you take advantage of this, there's a nice little shortcut for you to get up to here to this building and get some satchel charges and stuff. But we'll talk about that in a second. If you were to come down here, yet yeah, here you go. We'll go back this way for a second. If you came into this building, again, kind of open. Not as big as some of the other ones. You got slopes instead of stairs because reasons. Uh, obviously, you're going to find a lot of submachine guns here. You got some ammo for that, though. So, like I said, if you wanted to take advantage of this, you could have gotten over here pretty easily. Also, could have gone into that building pretty easily, too. Come back over here. You can circle around and find, uh, like, multiple ways to get from either, like, you get around this building here. This leads you into the bottom area, which, you know, you get shot up and die. We'll come back to that one, though. If you were to start on this building... This is a really great building, because not only can you get a submachine gun, but you can get my favorite, um, the 357, which is great. And you want to check out this building right here. Again, mostly just miscellaneous health, stuff like that. Nothing too crazy. But keep track. You want to really memorize if you want to play this map well. You do want to kind of remember where everything is. It becomes second nature after a while. Yet another submachine gun. You get some ledges. You can also get it, if you do ju jump, like, with the glue on gun stuff, you can get on that building, but I don't really recommend it. It's not much good up here. We'll get to these side areas in a second. So here's the bottom one of this building. Lots of explosives in this one, as you can see. 
And this one's unique because it leads to this little building where you get yeah, another submachine gun and uh, the only charging uh, station in the whole map, I believe. Then get out there. That's where that one opens up from the HUD. And there you go. So yeah, you keep this... The, the, you want to control these kind of buildings right here in the back. Which is because it's got this, especially this building. If you can control this one, you, like there's a lot of goodies. Because as you see here, from this building, you can jump and get the long jump, and you can get some of these bad boys, the uh, snarks. Let's check out this uh, side area. Uh, from here, you can get to the first of the tunnels. There's not too many of them, but there's a few in this map, and they can really help you get around. Uh, they they go under the hut area, so they mostly lead it back around to that little side area, but let's go check this out first. Get a lot of explosives. So this particular hut leads to this um, side area, or not side area, this garage. We'll come check it out later because that leads to the back of the map. Like I said, uh, despite being a lot of the... This is, um, it's a, this is actually, like I said, one of the most played maps, and a good reason for that is, is because, you know, on a busy 32-player server... Um, like this could accommodate that many players. One of the changes we'll be making from the map series that I used to do, the old rendition, let me just pause here, is that I won't be doing so many uh, bots per map. Um, I'm gonna do, instead I'm gonna try to show you what I feel is a good size. Uh, it can accommodate 32 players, but I actually think this is a good 16 player map. Just so you have some breathing space when you spawn and you have a time to grab some weapons. Uh, it, it's fun, 32 people, don't get me wrong. Just like all maps are in this game, really. But, you know, just, I feel it plays... If you're talking about playing it, uh, I, I feel it works a little better better than... But yeah, get in here for some ammo, and uh, as well as a hiding spot. Be careful, though, someone could throw grenades. But those... Get in there for a quick hideout and to get some ammo for your gluon and your gauze. I forget the names. The gauze cannon and the Egon, I'm gonna call them that. Uh, I don't know if those are the right names. I, I always forget those two. I always get them mixed up. So yeah, here's this other building, which I didn't show off yet. Some more explosives. A nice shortcut to get over to that building I showed earlier. This little console where you can get that other... The If you want a, another way to get to the uh, one... Uh, RPG, I actually completely forgot about that. If you want another quick way. This building or the shotgun and revolver building you want to control... Then you can get here for another, with the other map's other long jump and, you know, the Hornet. Which isn't as useless as some people like to give it credit for. Especially if you use the fast fire mode and catch someone on, on guard, it's not that bad. Here is the crossbow um, area again. Very good. So let's go back here now. Show off this area a little bit more. Again, that's just the hallway that might look useless or like, you know, dead end at first. But keep this in mind because... You're gonna take use that ledge later. We're out of the way, G man. We got business to do. So yeah, here there's a couple more buildings here. Uh, but first we'll go back in here to get to the garage I showed off earlier. Actually, I was wrong. There's the other charger. I, I always just think there's the one. But yeah, here's another crossbow, which isn't as useful as the one in the other building. But there is also this little truck right here with a bunch of satchels. So don't discount that. Let's just. Get rid of these for posterity. There's no real reason to destroy the crates. The map spawns with more, but, you know, there's, they're just there for decoration. And, yeah, get that charger if you want to, like, you know, heal up. And, all right, coming back out. You got this, uh, immediately this building, which is a really interesting and, like, potentially useful building. Because it's got multiple ways to exit. Here's the first exit on the ground, which will lead into this building. Which leads you back to that one with the SMG dead end. Dead end in quotation marks. Well, it is a dead end, but there's more to it than meets the eye. I'll show that real quick. So yeah, here's your couple some ladders here. If you take this ladder, and by the way, I'll show off this building in more detail. There's the first of two entrances there. Uh, that's about the only usefulness of that side. If you come on this side, again, more SMG. This is SMG Central. You'll come out this side. And just to sidetrack real quick, I forgot to show off these buildings a little bit more. So here's this building right here, uh, which this is a slope building I just remembered, so keep that in mind. You also have this one. I don't believe I showed off this one. Nope. So the thing about this building here is you got some nice chargers. 
You want to keep that in mind, and keep these windows in mind, because there's a lot of little mind games you can play. Especially because, once again, there's some ledges. I'll show off the area this leads to real quick before we go any farther. Keep these ledges in mind, because these could really help you, like, with, like, hiding out and, like... Especially if you know how to gauze jump really well, you can get around really easily. So if you were to come this way, you get back... This is a nice way to get back to the HUD. We'll go down this way, because I haven't showed it off yet. Also, don't just count the stairways, too, because there's a lot of those stair stairs here, and they're good hiding spots. Get some health, because, you know, taking some by steering to damage. Lots of health here, and the second of the underground tunnels. Now, the thing about this one is that this one only really leads to this little area here. Not too useful, but again, it is there. You know. And what would happen if you'd take this one is you'd be coming down to that big building here. This is a good place to start, if you start the map, don't feel bad here, because there's a gauze gun here, or, yeah, gauze cannon. Gauze and e-gun, we're just gonna call it that, because I'm always gonna keep forgetting. And again, some ledges on either side, take advantage of those. Now, if you were to go up here, you have this open area with a health charger, always, uh, like, top keck. So now, let's talk about this. You got a revolver up here, which is great. Um, the thing is, if you fall down these ledges, you can't get back up. Like, to this smaller area. There's some goodies down here, but ideally you want to have the gauze by the time you get up here. Because then you can't... You can get back up and kind of control this area more easily. Another great building to take control of. Also, a little fun fact. You're going to see a lot of draw errors at this part of the map. Which, you know, is a little bit, you know, crappy. But, you know, this is a multiplayer map and it's pretty big at that. You can't really blame them. You can jump over here without the gauze, though. You get some nice ammo. And again, remember I brought this up. Because this is important now. If you get on this ledge, see? You could fall down in here or you could find this well-hidden bunch of, like, you know, snarks. Which can really mess people up in the such tight quarters. So don't ever forget that one area. I feel that's probably one of the most overlooked parts of, the, of like, any deathmatch map here. So that's about this whole area here. A lot of good stuff. One of the areas you really want to hold if you can... Alongside the shotgun and this building. Don't forget this one too. But this building and that other one over there I mentioned with the rocket and gauzes. Keep that in mind. Here's the third tunnel. I get There's actually a... This is a really helpful one. Because this leads to one of the last areas I haven't touched to yet. We've seen this barrier from up there. But down here you can get some trip mines. And this will lead you back to the HUD. But it's a little dark. You can also get up here for a nice gauze and some health, which could really save your ass in the heat of the moment. And this is how you obviously get back there with the rocket launcher. A lot of good stuff here. Like, ideally, those are your four buildings on, like, kind of eat the polar ends. You want to do the one on the left with the rocket and gauze, or whatever direction that is. The submachine gun, or the revolver shotgun building in this one here. Uh, you got that one. At the end with all this, like, the stuff in there. And then you got that hold point in the side. So there's roughly four directions. Not quite, but you know, you see what I mean. And that's basically this map. There's maybe one or two rooms I didn't show off. But that's the general flow. Just get, make sure you know where all these strong weapons are. And, uh, yeah, you'll be fine. I also do have an ulterior motive, uh, for doing this map series again outside of just wanting to do it. I won't reveal what that is or even when I'll be able to actually, like, show off anything regarding that. But just keep that in mind. We got some more surprises coming up here. It's the great thing about the boss is they don't know how to use the explosives. Take that to your advantage if you ever play with the JK body here. My good old reliable. You probably don't want to take on a guy with the, you know... RPG there. As you can see, I am a master at sniping. Haven't missed a beat since I last played this in depth. Yeah, best player that ever lived. Yeah, and you can do that. I often forget that you can actually do a jump into that if you're brave. Yeah, uh, I think I just killed myself. Yeah, good stuff. Take advantage of that snark. Although, you want to be careful, because obviously people could be shooting you from you up there, so, you know. Probably don't take your time getting up there if you can. You get some drop on some people, some surprises. Not as many, um, grenade, rocket, uh, SMG grenades as you'd think, honestly. 
Like, there are a few, but you think for the map is such a focus on the um, SMG, there'd be more. You want to try to flush out these people when you're like, if there's a lot of people on this side, try to flush them out before you go down there, because someone could be waiting, obviously, to, like, you know, wrap your birthday presents up down here with the, like, the gauze. You know, that's never good. That's the stuff right there. Nice quick way to get up here, too. Well, in theory. Yeah, it's still in theory, because I- Oh, no, I did get up here. Well, almost. Yeah, I'm a little stupid, but you know, you already knew that if you've watched this before. I am only playing, obviously, with 16, but yeah, this map will work just fine with any more than that. I just, you know, expect a lot more, like, you know, density, if you will, but, you know, again, that's kind of obvious. Yeah, that's the only problem sticking around this area so much. They, someone will eventually just spawn down there and uh, use the gauze right on you. Obviously, this part could be a little bit troublesome too if uh, someone who knows how to use explosives is just waiting around there. They could just wait for someone to spawn and, like, you know, use it as a trap. But, you know, obviously, JK bodies, they're not quite that good. And, uh, yeah, one of my favorites, although I prefer some of the more enclosed in ones, but still a well played for a reason.